Okay. Aloha. Thank you for joining my live stream today. My name is Master Paul. Kind of fun doing these live streams on the fly. You never know where you're going to be at when you do them and you never know what the conditions are going to be. So very grateful for you showing. Very grateful for your presence here today. So today is a very exciting day. We're going to be talking about how to have one foot in the spiritual world, one foot in the real world, and still keep a smile on your face. We've got a lot of information to cover today. I was doing a flow with, uh, with the Divine prior to this workshop because before I do any <coughs> event, any um, live stream, I ask Kevin, so what is the subject today that we will be focusing on? And then heaven always uh, uh, gives me some, some insights as to the general direction. And so when I heard this today, I was actually quite surprised because I would not say it's a subject that I'm overly skilled with, certainly haven't taught on it at any point in time, and it's not necessarily a subject matter that Master Shah has taught uh, directly, indirectly, he gives us little teachings. Um, so welcome Stephanie, welcome Gabrielle, welcome Katie, great to see all of you joining me here today. I hope the line lights up, I hope as many people join us as possible, we're looking forward to a great show. And so, um, but what, you know, that's never really deterred me or any of the masters, because one of the things that Master Shah teaches <coughs> is, um, if you don't know the answer, just do it in flow. You know, now at the same time, when we teach, we need to read the materials and make sure that we understand what is the message center, etc. You know, we just don't teach that in flow. But when it comes to a subject of this nature, uh, I pretty much need to ask the divine. And then also what that will do is that will, will turn on uh, different uh, teachings, wisdoms and memories that I have and wisdom teachings that Master Shah has taught us. And just uh, doing a little flow here, I, I printed it out. I'll read it to you all in a little while. Um, I, I got a few in, oh yeah, I remember, oh yeah, I remember. And there's some brilliant uh, things that uh, Divine was telling me. He says, you know when Master Shah does this, you know when Master Shah does that. And so he is kind of reminding me that way, uh, how this all lines up to our uh, spiritual father's wisdom and teachings. So welcome Kristen, welcome Alicia, uh, welcome Dove. And, uh, so please hit the share button, invite more people, it sends out to your timeline, maybe they'll come join. <clears throat> Welcome Cynthia Marie. So I'd like to go ahead and begin uh, by inviting all of the holy beings to join us here today so that we can have a wonderful workshop. I'm going to adjust my camera a little so that we have a little bit more uh, Buddha in the imagery here. Love Guan Yin but I'll uh, sit next to her next time and we'll do it like that. That way we get a little better positioning. There we go. <clears throat> so I will invite in all the holy beings and I invite you to place your hands in soul light, soul surface, hand position, which is the left hand over the message center and the right hand uh, over pointing towards heaven. Dear Divine, Dear Tao, Dear Source, Dear Master Shah, I love you, honor you, appreciate you, and I personally bow down to you. I am so deeply honored and grateful for your incredible, uh, incredible generosity in bringing these wisdom and teachings to humanity, for giving every moment of your life to serve humanity. You are the most unconditional servant I have possibly witnessed in person, and you are a wonderful teacher. And honored to call you my master. I ask that you be present at this time to guide this live stream, to allow me to teach in your words as much as possible, to align all of those souls that come to watch this in the future in such a way where they get deeper and higher wisdom, how to move forward their spiritual journey and at the same time align to their physical path, how to do all of that in a joyful place. We ask that this higher level of wisdom and teaching come at this time that you borrow my mouth. 
We ask that all of those souls that are on the line now, all those that will come in in the future, open your heart and soul to this wisdom. Receive the messages, receive the blessings, and know that even through the entirety of this live stream, you are receiving huge wisdom, insights, and blessings. I ask all my downloads and treasures from my message center to please turn on for the entirety of this one hour live stream. Offer your greatest love to all those that are present. I ask my ten da cards, 900 frequency ten, ten da cards, the countless saints, saints, animals, temple souls, treasures to turn on during the entirety of this live stream to please offer your blessings as appropriate to all those on the live stream to help open their message center so that they might receive this higher wisdom and greater da'ai. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us chant love, peace, and harmony together for a moment <clears throat> to connect all our hearts and souls together. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. <coughs> Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome, Pat JD. Thank you for joining us here today as well. So, <clears throat> when I was talking to the uh, the empty live stream early, which is, happens in the first two or three minutes of any event as you were all coming on, <clears throat> I have to remember that somebody in the future will watch this uh, and not watch it live, and they do not want to be bored uh, while I am waiting for everyone to come on. So I'll repeat some of the things that I said in the first few minutes. That when I uh, do these live streams, I never truly know in any given day what I'm going to focus on. Last week being an exception, the message was the whole week work on the five major energy centers. So, okay. So I knew what I was going to be working on. But for the most part, each day, <clears throat> I ask the Divine, I ask Flo, what is the purpose and message for today? And this morning, I received this information. Part of it was because in this last week, I have con connected with several people and... Um, after the communication, after I connected with them, one of the things that was said, in two cases this occurred, they said, you know, I think I am not having enough fun because I'm finding myself too much in the spiritual side. And that was an aha moment for me because it came up afterwards because of the flow that I had done for them. And uh, the message was to have more fun. And then there was an aha moment. And so it reminded me about the necessity for balance in this life. <clears throat> you know, I have my own understandings. Um, I might think they're right. They're probably only 1% right. It's like if, if, if all of us on the line right now walked up to, an, to, uh, to a person and he said, I'm going to show you all an object and you're going to tell me what you think it is. And then he puts a blindfold on us, a very thick, dark black blindfold. And then he walks all of us up, one by one, to an elephant. Somebody grabs it and says, it's this. Somebody touches it somewhere else and says, it's that. Everyone will touch that somewhere else and call it something different, especially if we don't know what an elephant is. And that's very much what it's like when we go through life. 
<clears throat> we wake up in this world with a mom and dad and their sets of rules, and then they, because of their sets of rules, we go through a certain spiritual teaching, and then we have our karma and our soul guiding us, and we hit about the age 20, uh, and then we, we have major relationships which impact us positively and negatively. And we move through life with jobs and relationships, and we continue to try to bring this balance in our life to maintain joy. And what happens is we all wear our own colored glasses, how we bring ourselves to life. So spiritual teachings are designed to help us to remove our rose-colored glasses and align to the source from which we came from. And so when we finally get that light bulb turned on in us, for me, I was 18 when that light bulb turned on. Some of us it's 25, some of it's 30, some of us it's 50 before that light bulb becomes strong and we chase that aspect of our spiritual journey. And some of us, we really need it. We, we go deep into it. We, we throw our whole life into it because it just feels good. Our soul enjoys the nourishment. But we forget that we still have to take care of our relationships. We still have husbands, wives, children. <clears throat> we still have uh, those loved ones around us. You know, the, the nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles. And when we step into this spiritual journey, especially if it's an aggressive spiritual journey like the kind with Master Shah because it's very much about reaching enlightenment if possible in one lifetime, then we change the way we are. And those that have been around us our whole life, they don't know what to do with that change. We know it's beautiful. We know that we're, we're moving more towards love. We're moving inside. We know we're growing. But they see it as something foreign and different. And when we try to share with them how we're being uh, uh, impacted in a very beautiful and positive way and how we would like to share that with them, as you know, they might not always take it a way that we intended and therefore we're judged, criticized, etc. So this polarizes a lot of people. And it's very unfortunate because we just want to share our love and they just want the old us back. And we don't really like that old us as much then as, you know, now we like ourselves much better because we go through the spiritual journey. They don't appreciate us as much because they got used to the old us. So this is quagmire that we balance ourselves in. <clears throat> Finding joy in this balance is really about acknowledging that everyone's rose-colored glasses is perfect for them. How many times have you uh, been approached by someone, for example, that is very dogmatic in their particular belief system? It can be a belief system on how, how good their car is versus yours. It can be a belief system about how this version of, of, a, of an animal is the, is the best canine breeded version. It's a dogma. It's their belief system. It could be a religious belief system. This is the way. This is the only way. And then they try to push that belief system down your throat doesn't feel very good, does it? <clears throat> and so that's because they have their rose-colored glasses. When we start to recognize about that about all seven billion people, we can bring a lot of peace into our life. We can bring a substantial amount more joy into our life because we can move into a place of compassion and understanding for whoever is in front of us. This morning, all the Divine Channels were on a phone call in which we receive wisdom and training once a week. This phone call was from one, uh, uh, two of the Masters and they had been out serving and one of the pieces of wisdom they brought to the call this morning was that <clears throat> they weren't quite sure how to deliver what resonates with their heart, these, these teachings, with another. And I'm sure that you can relate to that and what they had found success. And in relating that success to us, one of the key underlying messages was listening. How can we listen when we have our rose-colored glasses on and we want to speak through those rose-colored glasses? How can we hear them when we are unable to because we have our own agenda? Our agenda is so that we can feel loved, accepted, and appreciated. That's why we want to speak. That's why we want to share. We want the validation. We want the love. We want the appreciation. That brings us temporary joy to our heart. That's why everyone seeks attention. It's a form of 
receiving love. And when we want to offer any of the wisdom that we have to others, we sometimes give it to them without them really being open to it. And so these are all little ways in which we can separate ourselves from our own joy. We have a joy from our spiritual journey, but when we go to share it with another, we uh, receive some rejection sometimes, and therefore we find this difficult balance between the spiritual life and the physical life. This is just one area in which it shows up. But you'll find the wisdom that I'm sharing with you today will assist you in all the different aspects of your life. And welcome Lily Dung, welcome, thank you for joining, welcome Yvonne, welcome Kristen, thank you all for joining today, very excited to have you. <clears throat> and so, one of the key uh, pieces of wisdom, I'm going to read the divine flow that I, that I jotted down before I started this event is that in order to maintain joy in our life, in order to walk the middle line, we must move into a place of gratitude with our spiritual journey much more often. And when we bring our self into the rest of the physical world, <clears throat> it is not two separate things. Our spiritual life is this physical world. We must learn to bring ourselves in every moment in this physical world and carry our spiritual journey into it with grace and with joy. And one of the ways we accomplish that is with awareness that our glasses are different than theirs. That's where the compassion comes in. Of course we want to align ourselves with everyone. But how do we do that if we don't listen better to where they're at? In the sharing this morning, two of the masters had approached uh, somebody in the educational system. And they weren't quite sure how or when to release anything that they wanted to share. They're bouncing off the chair with wanting to share this wisdom about love and peace and harmony and forgiveness and all the other wonderful tools that we apply to our spiritual life to bring balance to our physical life. Of course we want to go out and share, that's what we're being asked to do. <clears throat> but what they discovered through trial and error, mind you, is that when they listened and reflected and listened and reflected, they found an opening. They found the person talking to them was sharing about something that was similar to what we had to share. And it was at the right time, they dropped a piece of breadcrumb. And they said, you know, we know of a very beautiful song that when it's played brings great healing and peace to the environment. And you were saying that in your educational system you really enjoy the use of music to bring value to the students. And they might have said something else like maybe one of these times you can check into it. Very simple. Left the breadcrumb. Because they took the time to listen, personally they learned more. Personally they didn't have an agenda that interrupted their joy or that other person's joy in sharing what they wanted to share. Because when you let somebody share, they're in joy. When you listen with a compassionate, open heart and mind, you always receive benefits. The opportunity to present will be there. One of the other pieces of wisdom they shared this morning, which I'm sure you can resonate with, is the divine will always bring the right person in front of us. We just need to relax into that. And that was very sage wisdom. So I invite you to keep that in mind as well. So now I'm going to read you the flow that the divine spoke to me about a half hour before this live stream started. This is more about you maintaining your personal health and well-being specific to your the way you bring your, self, your physical body into your spiritual life, the way you bring your spiritual life into your physical life. And this is about, um, well, I'll read it, but uh, I'll talk about it more afterwards. And then you can offer any aha moments that you get from this. Okay. Oh, 
how this is the divine my sons and daughters I am honored to offer you guidance on the nature of the universe and how you fit into it you see my dear ones life is a play and as such you should play in it life was not created for the sole purpose of suffering nor was it created for the sole purpose of enlightenment life was created for experience and enjoyment what is the word in the middle of enjoyment joy it is when we operate in joy that we are in alignment with our highest self the divine continues I created you in my likeness do you think I have no fun or joy do you think all I do is sit around all day and focus on my spiritual journey of course not I enjoy all of you especially when you are enjoying your life the way I intended for you it is when you my children are out of alignment when you are not experiencing joy that I am also not experiencing joy so how do you stay in enjoyment I have to show you this because when he spoke this to me I see I'll see if you can read this read the words here. I'm gonna put these words in between my finger this is how he spoke it to me you see that I n dash j o y dash meant in when you're when you say, he says uh, so how do you stay in joy how do you stay in joy meant you get it I thought that was kind of kind of cool when he spoke that to me <clears throat> You simply think of me from a place of love, gratitude, and appreciation. This is the elixir of life, the Divine says. Love, gratitude, and appreciation are the tools of the greatest masters. Life is to be drunken in by the mouthful. But sometimes what we experience is bitter and not very tasty. It is in these times that I remind you of the choice you have in every moment. Now this is, this is where the wisdom kicks in. All of this is brilliant. But I really want you to pay attention to this part. It is at these times that I re remind you of the choice you have in each moment. In each moment you have the choice to further energize the thought word or action or that is that has occurred or you have the choice to de-emphasize it so a thought word or action occurs we judge it may be as unpleasant or negative or we have a choice to de-emphasize it do we emphasize it or de-emphasize it and dissolve it do we emphasize it or de-emphasize it with love, gratitude, and appreciation? The spiritual journey is not an easy one. No journey that reveals the deepest, the highest, and the most beautiful ever is. However, the choice of how you respond or react to each step on the path up the mountain is entirely controllable by you. It lies, in this lies the secret to a happier and healthier life. Your beloved Master Marilyn has spoken of this in her excellent book on gratitude. In this she wrote my words of how you can see gratitude in each moment. Even the ones that are difficult at first. I will remind you that here that the response and the reaction are entirely in your control and it is in every new moment 
that a response of gratitude to every event is possible. A response of gratitude to every event, even the ones we judge, is possible. What does your beloved Master Shah teach when, he, when water is spilt? Some of you might not know this. First time I saw this was probably seven or eight years ago. Water was spilt. And everyone's like, oh! Because that's what we were taught by our parents. You know, some of the, my, my parents slapped me, slapped me when stuff was spilled. So we have these dogmas, these belief systems. What does Master Shah say? Ah, good luck. Spilled water is good luck. And he would go on and only give a one sense of teaching after that. He didn't, he didn't reveal the secret. But the one sense of teaching he would say is, be careful what you think. Why? Because the response dictates the energy of how things happen after that moment. The Divine created us in the Divine's likeness. What we focus on is what we receive, the four powers. Body power, where you place your hands is where the healing goes. Sound power, mantra, where, what you chant is what you become. Visualization, what you visualize is what you receive. These are part of the four powers. This is the same thing. We are all little manifestors in our own right. And when we have an unpleasant experience in our life or something that we have judged as unpleasant or something we have been taught, like spilling water, is unpleasant, and we react with something negative, what are we putting forth and our future manifestation. More negativity. It is the response where we have all the control and the wisdom that came through in the Divine's teaching, through Master Marilyn's teaching, as we bring ourselves into each moment, is to see everything as much as possible from a place of gratitude. Now this is not a, a, a sprint. This is a marathon. So it's a trained response it's something where you just have to consistently remind yourself and lovingly remind yourself when you forget and you react instead of respond. You just pat yourself on your back and you say, I'll get it, I'll get it next time. Okay? And you shift it to a place of gratitude. This morning I was talking to a client on the phone and I said, okay, let's practice. You're driving down the freeway, you get a flat tire. What's a typical reaction? Oh, sheesh, you know, just da 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 da. Not again. I'm going to be late for this, I'm going to be late for that. Da, 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 and the mind goes off. Typical reaction. What is a controlled response of gratitude? You come up with one. Tell me what your response is. I'm going to wait. I'm going to read them. I want to see all the different responses. I want you to go outside the box. You have to train your brain to think positively about something that is deemed negative. Think about it. I'll just wait right here. I'm going to wait. You guys go ahead and think of how can you turn that into a positive? What would you say to your head at that moment? I'm guessing some of you are stymied. Like, I don't know. What do I do? I, I don't know how to make that into a place of gratitude. Everything can be turned into gratitude if we just take a moment with it. We can ask, in this experience, where is the gratitude? Where, where, how can I find a piece of gratitude? A child is on death's door from something. Where is the gratitude in that? Be grateful the child is not gone. The child is still with you. Which response? Fear of losing the child or a response of holding on to uh, the grateful that the child is still with you is going to create the highest propensity of higher frequency that has the highest possibility of benefiting your child. 
So everything you can find the positive of. And it is this constancy of being conscious with each moment, catching ourselves with a reaction, converting it to a place of gratitude. What this does is it allows us to operate on a spiritual level in the physical world. It allows us to maintain spirituality in the physical world. We don't have a spiritual life and a physical life. They, they, they blend together. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. We are a soul having a physical experience. And a soul is supposed to be in its ideal condition, unconditionally loving towards those others around us that would cause a reaction, towards those others around us that judge us, because they have their own belief systems, their own rose-colored glasses. So we can substantially enhance our well-being, our, um, our magnetic pulse or point of attraction, which I speak about in my soulmate attraction system. We can, we can be the magnet that pulses gratitude or moves towards that into the compass on a more consistent basis. We can be the magnetic pulse that allows other people to completely share and validate wherever they're at without judgment, without criticism, with compassion. And once they have felt understood, heard and validated, we can share with them our guidance, wisdom and insights that can bring value to them. They will absolutely hear it quite well because their hearts are open because you stopped and listened. So we can apply the wisdom teachings to serve others from this place, and we can serve our own soul journey maintaining balance from this place. Uh, I was chatting with one of, them, uh, uh, one of our uh, um, uh, live stream uh, uh, participants right now, uh, earlier this morning, <clears throat> and she was chatting about uh, how she got the insights to have more joy in her life from a soul reading uh, that, that was given as a piece of information that can assist uh, her. And she contemplated that and realized that she had been spending quite a bit too much time on the, on the how am I going to clean up my karma side. She pulled out some joyful music that she hadn't listened to in a while. We joked about Bob Marley, don't worry, be happy. I was chanting it this morning to my wife. She thought I was crazy. You know, she's Thai. She's never heard it before. You know? So what can you do? We want to make sure we operate in the physical world with things that bring us joy and happiness as well. And we want to make sure those things that can derail us, that we uh, be our, do our best to respond appropriately instead of react inappropriately. And again, it's a, it's a marathon, not a race. So that's the wisdom. So now I'm going to go back and read some of your responses. Okay, and so Cynthia Marie says, for example, wow, thank you for this flat tire. Thank you for allowing me to move to the side of the road safely. That's a brilliant response. It's one that acknowledges a positive and it leads you towards a, a potentially another positive. So when you start with one positive comment, it's much easier to move to the next because you might be in a, in a, experiencing a, a situation or a person or whatever it might be that's not easy to stay in that positive place. But even if it's just you can't leave, boy, I'm grateful I'll be able to leave in about 15 minutes, you know, and, and then I won't, I won't have to, to be subject to this person's um, unpleasant communication. That's a piece of gratitude. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to, um, to listen with a compassionate heart. I'm grateful that uh, I have learned a better way to communicate than this person that's communicating with me. And maybe I'll have an opportunity by listening better that I can open my heart to them and possibly they'll be open to uh, a, a loving communication, a forgiveness practice to where they won't communicate like this to me in the future. This is, you know, we want to build on each gratitude um, when we're in the middle of those uh, conditions that can be um, a bit more unpleasant than just a one-stop thing. 
So Dove says, thank goodness it's only one flat tire. Brilliant. Thank goodness it's only this that my engine didn't blow up. Yeah, whatever. Kristen says, I try always to say when things seem to go awry, thank you for reminding me to return to my jong. I went away. The jong is the lower abdomen energy center, for those that are not familiar. Uh, I was taught, even as a young person, to use the negative events as a step on your spiritual journey. Brilliant. <clears throat> um, so you're very blessed to have received that teaching. And then Kristen Rojas says, everything is in divine occurrence. I, I have no idea what the divine is saying to me. And this one is a, it's a, it's a excellent response. It's a little bit harder one, especially when it still hurts. You know, it's like, ah, oh, I know everything is divine timing, but man, this hurts so much. How do I work with this one? But sometimes um, we can find other pieces of gratitude around it that help that one be more palatable. And we can also look for those, especially sometimes a day or two later, things occur and we go, oh, wow, if it hadn't have been for this, then this wouldn't have occurred. Oftentimes, hindsight is twenty twenty. So uh, the statement that Kristen offers is one of those where one of the things I say is, um, you know, I, I truly believe that when I look back on this, you know, 30 or so days from now, I'll have a much bigger picture of why this occurred and I'll be able to see all the positives that will come from it and I'm open to those positives coming to me. So, you know, it's, 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 it's all reframing it so that we don't allow our negative compass to continue more of that negativity because we're all little manifestors. I give people a visual um, when I'm communicating with, with like my soulmate attraction program, I explain to them that in the past, and this applies to everything, so this is just an example, if we are stuck in a financial rut, if we are stuck in a relationship rut, there's two aspects to it. One is what we're constantly focusing on. The other is the karmic aspects. And they both impede on each other. What the karma does creates a negative situation which we constantly focus on. When we constantly focus on something, it creates more negativity which can in return, could in return create more unpleasant karma. So they work together to create unpleasantness for us. How do we stop that? There's a process by which you can identify them um, and define them, clear the karmic blockages. We can also do this part, which is what we're doing today, which is recognizing that every time we focus on anything negative, that um, it creates more of that in front of us. So this is, in a fact, a, a form of derailment. And visually, what I, what I teach my clients is that um, we have in front of us anywhere between two weeks and two months of manifestation. Things that, we, that are in front of us based on our continued series of thoughts, the thoughts that are unconscious, the thoughts that we just put out, and our karma. That lays out these stepping stones in front of us. All these stepping stones. And we're walking on this stepping stone, and then the next one, and then the next one. And each time we put a new thought forward, it assists that new stepping stone in front of us two, two weeks to two months out in, in its formulation. So when we focus on something that is positive, when we convert something that is unpleasant to a, a, a form of gratitude, when we try to catch ourselves and don't react but instead be in a positive response, what are we doing to the manifestation process? What, in essence, we're doing is we're, we're converting the stepping stone. We're, we're, we're tweaking it to be one of more positivity. And pretty soon, the one two weeks from now that we would step on that would be more negativity now has more positivity. It's not instant. It's not. Not yet. As we move into higher frequencies, it will be. But right now, we're still in the learning mode. We must be in more control of our thought processes because as we move into higher frequencies, into higher dimensions, whatever verbiage you want to use, we're moving into faster, uh, faster manifestation. Things will come at us a bit faster. So we have to be much more conscientious of what we are doing in our thought processes. And as we do that, that one or two weeks out will now be more positive. And because we stepped onto a positive stepping stone, it's easier to step onto another positive stepping stone, which makes it easier to step onto another positive stepping stone and so forth. So when we have a negative event and we react and we fall, we dust ourselves off, 
we do forgiveness practice and we move back into that positivity. Because yes, it could impact the future a little, but if we catch it fast enough, convert it with our spiritual awareness, then we can have huge uh, positivity moving forward. And again, this applies to finding your soulmate, it applies to readjusting your finances, you know, everything to be positive about where before we complain about. We just keep looking for it, keep looking for it, keep looking for it. And then eventually we get that one good stepping stone and we just keep building on it little by little by little. And if something negative occurs, we say, well, that's just some karma playing itself out. You do your forgiveness practice and you're grateful that the karma is played out. And you see, I don't know where it's going to lead to positively, but I know it will. Now, I want to talk about another thing. There's, um, there's an author, I can't think of his name right now. I stumbled across him. You know, when you do YouTube searches, you just stumble across some of the brilliant pieces of wisdom out there. And I came across a self-help guru, specifically in the department of... Um, of uh, right thinking for, for financial blessings. And his set of thoughts were, were very, very, very different than Napoleon Hill and all the others. He's read all of them and adopted a lot of them, and he, he felt what he found was a lot of flaws in them. And I have to admit, there were a lot of flaws in them. He takes it to a very finite degree, so you have to be very technical to appreciate his, his methods and wisdom. But one of the pieces of wisdom that he shared, I'll share with you, <coughs> was... He said, I have had a lot of businesses and I've been, uh, I've had a, a my share of business problems, my share of business lawsuits. He got caught up in the, in the huge stock market crash six, seven years ago, 10 years ago, whenever it was. And he said, so he had creditors coming out the ears that are all saying very unpleasant things about him. He had a big enough name where it was splattered all over the internet and he had negative press everywhere. And he said, what he did that kept him in a very peaceful place and, and helped him to rebuild his, his financial empire, he said, I never dealt with a piece of negativity that came at me until I absolutely needed to. He said, I would see it, I would read it, I would know it's not accurate. He said, so I would just send them love and forgive them, and, and I would set it aside. He said, if it was a lawsuit that had a date on it, he said, I would stop, I would make a decision about how I would proceed on a mechanical level, he said, and then I would just put a date on it when I wanted to deal with it. And I wouldn't think about it for a moment until that date. He said, in this way, I was able to control my magnetic frequency, my pulse, my, my positive vibration. I did not allow the negativity to ruin his path in front of him. And so we can apply this wisdom to our pathway. This is how we can walk the physical path and the spiritual path with joy we take responsibility. We have to recognize that we have um, different areas in our life that impact us. We have the work arena and the co-workers that impact us negatively or positively. We have the, uh, uh, the children, the family, mom, dad, nieces, nephews. They impact us both positively and negatively. We have the neighbors. We have um, our health issues that can impact us positively or negatively. We have our finances that can impact us positively or negatively. And each one of these, we are given the choice of reaction or response. Each one of these, we have tools that we are blessed to have. The tools of forgiveness, the tools of love and da'ai, the tools of soul communication, the ability to communicate with those souls that we have suffering with, so that we keep ourselves in a positive place. It is the, that um, consistency and trust me, I know, I know that there will be hiccups, falling off, forgetting, forgetting two or three days at a time. It's a marathon. It's not a race. Pick yourself up. Do it again until you get it right. I've given you this example before, but Master Shah teaches, always offer your food and drink to the holy beings. Took me well over a year before I finally got it down. I was always shoving food in my mouth and drinks without offering it to them, and I would guilt myself, oh. Finally, I stopped guilting myself. I just said, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I'll do better next time. But eventually, I won the race. I get it right every time now. So this is something that you just ingrain into your life. And one of the best ways to ingrain it is to teach others. When we teach children this, what are the benefits? 
<laughs> children are going to catch you right away. They're going to remind you right away. Okay? You teach them, they will definitely remind you right away. No problem about that. So they're great for that. So teach others. Uh, when we teach others, we, we feel an obligation to do it, but it's also a reminder to us. So you want to spread this kind of wisdom. Let's see what other people say here. Gabrielle says, my first reaction would be panic, but I'm educating my heart and brain with the teachings and through the practices to become more grounded and calm. Brilliant. Okay, and welcome uh, Katie. I think you came in earlier, but I see you again. Welcome Sandra. And Kristen says, I love Eckhart Tolle's teachings to simply observe without reacting at all, which seems to justify, uh, which seems to just dissolve negative energy. <clears throat> True. It's, it's not that the teachings aren't out there or that I know all of you have heard this before. It's, it's unlikely it's the first time. But it's worthy of hearing again, isn't it? Because we get stuck in our routines. We get stuck in our patterns. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to offer everybody a blessing to help us align to the wisdom and teachings that were just imparted to assist you all to be more positive in your life. <clears throat> Make a request for an area of your life you would like to see more joy and positivity in. Call forth that specific, only one request. Call forth that specific relationship. If it's your finances, call forth the relationship of your finances and joy and happiness uh, with your finances. If it's a relationship with a coworker, husband, wife, job, whatever it is, call forth that relationship soul as well. I will connect to this blessing. This blessing is for all those that are watching now, all those that will watch this video in the future. For the request, as appropriate. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, Oh, 
Mahal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Healing treasure, please return. You are all very blessed. <clears throat> I will offer a soul reading as to what was received at this time. For those that are watching this video, Heaven was most generous with this blessing. Two of you had your soul journey saved. There was conditions in which depression and the onset of depression could have dramatically impacted your perspective on your soul journey and you could have went away from the value of wisdom that you had gained in this life and the lifetimes of suffering that you have already offset by your practice. There was four in this group that received huge blessings to balance blockages in the message center. The nature of this blessing for these four was such that they had the potential to have serious health issues related to the heart within the next year to four years depending on the individual. These would have been as a result of high levels of stress from the wrong thinking that had been blocking them. Many of these blockages were removed and replaced with the Divine's compassion and sage wisdom. These little bells will go off for all of those watching this recording. Each of you has received a uh, alarm, if you will, that will go off when you react. It is up to you to move to a response that is gauged, controlled, and positive. But you are blessed to have received this divine alarm. The amount of time it would have taken each of those who experienced this blessing to accomplish this on their own would have been about one and a half lifetimes of unconditional service each day for 60 years for humanity. This was a rather large blessing because of the nature of the purification that each of you are trying to achieve that you can be better servants. You are very blessed. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you for that uh, beautiful flow. Thank you to my healer soul for that incredible service. We thank the Divine, the Tao, the Source, and Master Shah for the opportunity to offer this wisdom and this teaching and these blessings here today. I thank all of you for your unconditional service, desire, and willingness to open your heart and soul to be a, a better servant to humanity, to be a better person. <clears throat> I encourage you to contact me if you have any uh, other uh, insights, wisdoms, or um, uh, aspects of your life that you need guidance with and to please share this after we complete here today. If you haven't already uh, clicked the follow button that uh, is either above this now or when we finish, then do so and when I go live you'll know about it. And uh, I look forward to serving you more in the future. 
I thank you all for joining me. As always, it's joyful. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Love you, love you, love you. Bye-bye. See you then.